when we consider biblical prophecy, I think for most people, what is described in such books as Revelation can come across as vague. There are trumpets being blown, seals being opened, cataclysmic events that lead to the loss of one third of mankind. And you see the reason these scriptures are widely misunderstood is because we think that the writers did not have the vocabulary to describe something that they had never seen before. I want to tell you all something. Most of what I'm about to discuss is going to sound way out there or nuts. You guys should be used to that by now. But at the same time, I didn't write the Bible. So if my interpretation sounds a bit bizarre, I have my reasons. I don't really think people truly understand what's coming. Some people do. I know the few people in power do. It is the purpose for almost everything they do. And what's coming is something you would only see in a movie and people are just not going to be able to handle it. I'm talking about the type of fear that causes heart failure. That's the reason why some people are going to be removed from this place so that they won't have to deal with it. So what happens is when people read a book like Revelation, they think they have to translate or decipher what has been written as if it were written as a riddle to figure out. A mountain of burning fire falling out of the sky is exactly what is described. I know we call them meteors, but the description of a meteor is a burning mountain falling out of the sky in simple terms. So why is it that when the same writer talks about multi-headed beast and strange creatures, for some reason, we have to figure out what that is. I say, it is what it is. In other words, I think that what is described should be taken quite literally and looked at scientifically. See, not everyone may understand the word alien when you say it, right? And people will have their own mental picture of what they think an alien is. Plus the word alien out of context could mean several things. So to get your point across to everyone, you would physically describe the type of alien you are speaking of or writing about. And if you don't want people to misinterpret your description, you would make sure that your description is as accurate as possible. Not everyone is going to see the things described in biblical prophecy. That's actually a part of the prophecy. For those who are here to witness these coming events, it's going to take a lot. It's going to take a lot of understanding and strength. With that said, let's see how deep this hole really is. first thing you want to keep in mind is that biblical prophecy does not describe the end of the world. It does not describe the end of mankind. It describes the end of evil. And unfortunately, it is going to take a bit of destruction to finally rid the planet of this disease. Know and understand that the elites who rule the world, they absolutely believe in biblical prophecy. It is not a theory or myth to them. They don't struggle with faith, they know, and so they are preparing. Now the reason I am bringing all of this up is because we have a big problem. And the problem has more to do with how we interpret biblical prophecy. You see, most people are trying to solve a biblical riddle. When no one ever said you had to do that. What I'm saying is, instead of looking at the things discussed in prophecy as symbolic or figuratively, we should probably be looking at it literally. And what I am going to refer to specifically is in the book of Revelation, chapter 9. Then the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before God. 
saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels, who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year, were released to kill a third of mankind. Now the number of the army of the horsemen was two hundred million. I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red, hyacinth blue, and sulfur yellow. And the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three plagues a third of mankind was killed by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone which came out of their mouths. Now most people would look at that scripture and say to themselves, hmm, I wonder what John was talking about when he wrote this. But I say, what is there to figure out? I mean, a horse is a horse, of course, of course. When it says release the four angels bound at the river Euphrates, that's what it means. It doesn't mean four nations. It quite literally means four actual angels. It says angels that are trapped in the earth at the Euphrates River. They will be released upon us and the horsemen's army, the 200 million, it's not the Chinese army. It's not the EU's army. That doesn't even make sense. Actually, it is not a human army at all. These are physical creatures that are coming from somewhere. And where are they coming from? They're not coming from space, I can tell you that. If I said that there are subterranean ancient aliens coming to the surface on the backs of wingless fire drakes from the hollow earth, you might think I was out of my mind. Again, I didn't write it. John did, or at least that's how I interpret it. Folks, do you realize, actually most people don't know this, but several military institutions, including the one here in the U.S., they have been training their armies to fight underground for the past few years because they say the future war will be fought underground. They also say that about space, don't they? We know they are putting together a space force. So we are going to have to defend against things from above and things from below. Now, you can look in the book of Daniel and Revelation to come up with all types of interpretations and no one, no one wants to take what is described literally. It's too scary to take literally. So we'll just replace every monster in Revelation with humans. That way, it will subconsciously make us feel better, you know, because humans can deal with other humans. And I assure you, that army is something no human can deal with. That is why they are prophesied as taking out a third of mankind, without fail. Just about everything that happens in Revelation is out of our control. This is a rendition of a wingless fire drake. Hmm. Looks like a horse, doesn't it? Actually, this is a common look for wingless dragons in artists' renditions. Revelation chapter 9, the very first verse reads in the old book, The star was given the key to the bottomless pit, but in more modern versions of the Bible it reads, The key to the shaft of the abyss. Now where did that word shaft come from? Also, why does an angel need a key to the abyss. I'll tell you why. Because there is a door. Do you get it? It's not an invisible door. It's not a spiritual door. It's a real physical door. The reason I'm telling you all this is because they know about this pit that is inside the earth. I know some of you are still going to struggle with this because of the clarifications made to Daniel about his dreams and people are mixing Daniel's dreams with John's visions. That's fine. Let me just say this. Who is doing work up at the North Pole? You know that last year, 
you probably didn't hear about this, but last year, around the time of the viral outbreak, the U.S. spent over $150 million to send a German ship called the Polar Stern to the North Pole to drift and get stuck in the ice for one year, as they sent a sum of 300 scientists from 17 different countries to study quote-unquote climate change in the region. You know the same story John Kerry gave us when he went down to Antarctica? Do you remember? You know, if you wanted to create an actual bottomless pit, then you would probably have a tunnel that goes from one end of the earth straight through the middle and out the other side. The opening of this pit would be seen from anywhere on the globe except for the Arctic and Antarctic regions, the North and South Poles. Are you with me so far? Think about this. Probably only a few people know what the Nazis were doing in Antarctica. They have been tied to the occult. So what if the Nazis were actually looking for this door, the entrance into the bottomless pit? Think about this. Last year, actually, it was all over the news. They discovered a massive structure underneath the ice, about 150 miles across. You can Google that to learn more if Google doesn't limit your search like they did for me. I swear, I was doing a Google search on this structure. My internet connection was closed by Google. Then when I was able to get back onto Google, my search came back only showing one page of results. Anyway, Antarctic scientists have also discovered a massive cavern under the ice courtesy of NASA, also reported last year. Let me give you something else to ponder. You may be familiar with the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. What do those Tablets of Thoth suggest? That there is a spaceship hidden beneath the Great Sphinx and also the warning of an invading force that comes from where? Know ye, O man, that far in the future, invaders shall come from out of the deep. Then awake, ye who have wisdom, bring forth my ship and conquer with ease. Deep neath the image lies my secret. Search and find in the pyramid I built. I'm telling you folks that this rabbit hole is a bottomless pit. I do want to discuss this a bit more as it is important to those who are believers anyway, but I just wanted to get you all warmed up for more information on this, connecting more pieces of the puzzle. Until then, I think I've given you all a few things to look into before I go deeper into the subject. Truth is definitely stranger than fiction and sometimes the truth can be outright bizarre. I hope you all enjoyed this presentation and take care of yourselves and your families. Everyone stay awake, stay aware, stay safe in whatever hole you find yourself in. And I'll talk to you all soon.